Hey everybody, it's Sean. Welcome to Sean Vibes. Today we're doing a pick a card reading and each of the piles is a different topic. So we have four different topics. What you're going to do today, just like always, is you are going to use your intuition to choose which pile is calling to you and get your message for today. Now, because we have four different topics, there might be multiple messages for you in today's video. So feel free to go ahead and watch as many of them as you would like. It's also possible that there might not be a message here for you today. That is always a possibility. Uh, there are days when I'm just not your reader or there are days where you should check out a different video here on my channel. So our title topic of these four readings is what life change would you really like to make right now? And it was actually inspired by a video I saw by another content creator here on YouTube. The video was called Change Your Life in a Year and it's by a creator named Lavendaire. Lavendaire is phenomenal. If you're not already familiar with her channel, you should definitely check it out. So I will put a link to it in the description box here. I'll actually put a link to that specific video. It's a, it's a very short one. It's a five minute video. So it's definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah. So as I said, there are four different messages here and one of them at least might be for you. I'm going to tell you about your four crystals. That'll help you. <laughs> I don't know why that just happened. That was weird, right? Like that was a little bit strange. Of course, I'm going to tell you there's nobody else here. Anyway, let's go. Over, <laughs> let's go over your crystals that are going to draw you into your reading. So for pile number one, we have selenite. We have a lovely selenite nugget. That's the one that is going to be for pile one. For pile two, we have a tiger eye teardrop or tiger's eye. I never know whether to say tiger's eye or tiger eye. For pile number three, we have an Amazonite egg. It's almost like a little green Easter egg. I hope you guys can see that. Okay, these are really beautiful in person. And then for pile four, we have an amethyst ball. So, you know, it's a crystal, a crystal ball. So I'm gonna be silent now, take a second, Take a look, see which one of these four gems is calling to you. I think they're gems. Are they gems? I don't think they're gems. Like diamonds are gems and sapphires are gems, but these may not be gems. So take a second, take a look, see which of these four things, <laughs> semi-precious, I don't even know if they're semi-precious. These, I'm just going to say crystals. I'm going to use the word crystals all encompassingly, even though I'm pretty sure tiger's eye is not a crystal and I am pretty sure, and I know that Amazonite is not a crystal. So, um, just, you know, don't mind the crazy lady behind the, the camera, uh, in front of the camera. God, this is getting off the rails. Take a second, take a look, see which one of these is calling to you. And then you're going to look at the, um, description box or the first comment of this video. That's where you're going to find the timestamps to take you to your reading. And I will see you there. Hey y'all, so you are drawn in to your reading by this selenite crystal. I love this. I just got it um, last weekend and uh, selenite in general just always makes me happy. Whenever I see a piece of selenite, I want to own it. It doesn't matter what shape it's in. And I think it's got, I mean, it definitely has something to do with its appearance. It's at once translucent and opaque, which is just fascinating. Um, you know, if selenite was a person, there'd be a very mysterious, complicated person, possibly, possibly, maybe not, maybe not, because there's also the fact that it's very calming. This stone uh, is very calming for me, which is interesting because its purpose in uh, crystal work is that it charges the other stones. So it's very, very powerful. So this is the stone or the crystal that you were attracted to today. I'm just going to put her right up there while we do your reading. And in your reading, you guys are going to, we're going to look at what hobby you would really enjoy right now. So I'll pull a few cards for you. These have already been shuffled as I always say, uh, but you still might see me do this because it calms me down and helps me to get into the energy of your reading. So what hobby? 
Oh, all right. So we have judgment right away. We have the judgment card. What hobby might these guys really enjoy? We also have the six of pentacles. Oh, hi, nine of pentacles. Nine of pentacles really wanted to be here. Did y'all see how it flipped out just now? <laughs> it like flipped out. Judgment, six of pentacles, nine of pentacles. What hobby might these guys really enjoy right now? Oh, we have Empress. What uh -oh. hobby might these guys really enjoy right now? And we have the Emperor, very very interesting because as I was shuffling, I saw the emperor for a second as some of the cards were flipped over, but then I was just, you know, I, I kept going and he came out anyway. He really wanted to be here with you. So, so far we have judgment, six of pentacles, nine of pentacles, the empress and the emperor. And this guy is sticking out. So I feel like we should take her to look at that, the star card. Very very fascinating. So I'm going to enhance your reading with this Oracle deck. It's the Cosmic Cat's Wisdom Cards. I'm just taking it all in because there is a lot going on here. Can we just talk about the fact for a second that you've got one, two, three, four major arcana cards in your reading so far? And then the other two are pentacles. And what's very interesting to me about that is that, you know, pentacles, we typically associate it with earnings and money. Uh-huh. Okay. I think I just got what this is. I think I just got what hobby would make you all that would, would, I almost say make you all happy because I tend to be really focused on making you happy, but would, uh, that you would really enjoy right now. Um, but before I say anything, I do want to pull from the Cosmic Cats Wisdom cards. And again, I've already shuffled them. I'm not sure why I just riffled. And we just need to pluck. Taking this one. Truth. Let it show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah hobby that you all might really enjoy right now. I'm going to take one more of these. Tolerance. Sitting with it. Okay, so the first thing that crossed my mind as I began to pull your cards to see what hobby you might enjoy is, have you ever considered writing um, reviews or, or critiques? I got I got a very strong hit, particularly when we got this judgment card around using that part of your mind in your hobby, where you take a look at things and you analyze. And with us also having six of pentacles here, I'm getting that it might be part of your um, critiques or reviews might be uh, serving a need that we we, we aren't seeing get met so much anymore. And it is a fair and balanced representation of things, right? For the most part, we have become such an opinion driven society uh, because of social media. Everybody's got a platform. Everybody says something. And as we've known for a billion years, everyone has an opinion, right? Um, and so with the rise of social media, everyone's opinions are given the same level of credence. They're all given the same weight, even if they're not all valid opinions, because sometimes they're not um, informed opinions. That's the kindest way to say it. But even more so than that, what we've seen is the rise in opinion journalism. Oh, my gosh. So much of that. And I'm getting that for you guys, there might be an enjoyment for you in writing reviews or um, maybe even having a blog, hosting your own blog where you put these reviews or give critiques. You could do a commentary channel on YouTube where you present a fair and balanced um, uh, um, opinion. That's not the word. 
presentation, fair and balanced representation, presentation of that thing. Um, I'm, I'm getting something around like presenting both sides. So for instance, I was in a movie recently and, um, one of many of the critics didn't like it. And one of them said that she felt that the director didn't understand the subject matter. I thought that was harsh because, uh, first of all, I love this particular director. I've worked with her several times before, but I also thought it was harsh because that critic was essentially implying that she knows the subject better than the director who no doubt researched it a lot before directing the film um, and worked with the screenwriter in developing the film. Um, I thought I thought that was very, very arrogant. But my point is what would have been more intriguing is if that critic had presented two sides of that argument or that point. If she had said, here's what I see that the director has done with this movie and presented that for people and then said, but what I feel the movie uh, or the story was saying or, you know, whatever it was that she took umbrage with and then presented that. And so then her readers would get like a fuller um, idea of what the um a fuller idea about the movie itself, about the subject itself, right? So I, I, I've kind of gotten a little bit off topic to make the point, which is that I feel like there is so uh, little two-sided journalism happening. And I'm using the word journalism, which might sound intimidating, and we are talking about hobbies. We're not talking about you changing careers. So, you know, um, don't don't let that be too heavy. Let it be that, you know, you would do it independently. Nine of Pentacles is our independence card, right? And you would be doing this independently. You're not going to go, you know, for a hobby and seek out uh, other people to publish you or seek out, you know, uh, news outlets to work for. No, this is about self-publication in order for you to be able to share your viewpoints with other people and then doing it in a fair and balanced way so that you, in addition to sharing how you feel, you inform them more, you possibly educate them through the things that you write. Um, we have here with our, our cosmic cat card, you know, truth, let it show. And there's a greater chance of you, uh, sharing the truth in whatever critiques, uh, you write if you are presenting more than one side. And I think that there's, like I said, I feel like there's just, there's such an appetite for that out there because it's not a thing. We've even seen with news, um, as I said earlier, but I didn't give the examples, news has become so opinion-based. This is why you have these factions of these channels with like Fox News being far right and uh, MSNBC being pretty leftist. Uh, <laughs> so, so, there is an audience for a more balanced um, representation of opinion, right? It doesn't have to be that you only take one side. And I'm getting that this could be, um, that it could be book reviews. It could be music reviews. It could be movie reviews. It could be game reviews. It could be YouTube channel reviews, right? But in some way, for you to share uh, in in a form of commentary and analysis of things that you experience, um, and and to ch and to choose one particular thing, I'm getting that it's going to bring you a lot of joy because of the fact that you might be someone who hasn't felt as though your opinion mattered or that your opinion was valid. Uh, you might be someone who has like in conversations you don't feel like you have the right to speak up and present how you see things, and this will give you the opportunity. This will give you a platform for you know, putting the thoughts and feelings you have about things out there for other people to consume. Um, I'm getting that for you, there is a, uh, one of the, hi Casper, my cat, as always, just made himself known. 
Today's his birthday, actually. So um, I'm recording this on Thursday, April 27th, even though it is going to be released a week and a day from now. Um, but he, yes, he is 19 today. He is my love. I love this cat so much. Anyway, um, one of the reasons why this uh, is appealing for you is because the discipline around writing. And let me see if I can say that better because of the potential for discipline around writing. Um, it is a hobby, but you might be someone who really craves structure, organization. So the, uh, the gathering of notes or the researching of materials, if that's something that you wanted to do, or even just the consumption of the materials that you're going to be uh, writing the critiques or the reviews on, um, the like for instance audible oh my gosh this is a great one this is a great one for you if you like already listening to books or if you like reading but you don't have time to read then you know listen to books on audible and then write your review of the book when you get to the end because at the end of every book audible asks you if you'd like to leave a review so you can of course leave your star rating but then you can also write an actual review and then you could take that and publish it, like I said earlier, in a blog, uh, post it online. You could start up a social media page specifically for that if you don't feel like trying to maintain, create and maintain a website like you would need to with a blog. Um, you could type it out and then screenshot it and post it on Instagram so that people could read your reviews that way. But I'm definitely getting that there's something about, um, that for you, the hobby, a hobby like bowling would not feel as satisfying because, you know, our question today was what hobby would you really enjoy right now? And so it could be just you might have some workaholism or it could be just the fact that you as a person, even without being a workaholic, really enjoys structure. Um because we do have emperor here in the center of your reading and, and he is disciplined. He is, you know, definitely structure. Um, and then, you know, like I said earlier, being able to center it all around what is inside of you, what you are thinking, what you are feeling about the, um, the, the material couldn't think of the word for a second, the material of the subject that you are, critiquing or reviewing and then with us having the tolerance card here you know this gets back to what we said earlier about presenting both sides of it having a fair and balanced representation of that thing i love this idea so much <laughs> like i love this for you guys if i had the time i might even do it myself you know at the end of each week i post here on the channel um in the community tab what i call the roundup and it's where i list off and uh, share the thumbnails of the content that I found the most inspiring on YouTube uh, during the week. I consume a lot of YouTube and uh, one of my newest uh, f newest found loves is commentary channels. So as you can probably tell by the way I talk, I tend to listen to a lot of things that are educational in nature or um, have to do with psychology. But uh, recently I found this, shall we call it a guilty little pleasure? called the commentary uh, category. I am in love. <laughs> and so you can contribute to that space too with this hobby of yours. So we have so many ways in which you can bring this about. I'm getting uh, for you, you know, with us having Empress here and also having her in reverse, I'm getting for you to fight any feeling of, um, let me see. How do I put it? Um, it could be that you are naturally the word, the word that's here is passive, but that's not the word I mean. I kind of alluded to it earlier. Again, this idea of you might be someone who in a group uh, scenario and conversations doesn't necessarily feel that you have the right to speak up um, or to share your opinion. You might be someone who tends to feel like you have to agree with the opinion of the most dominant speaker in that group. Um, so the things that have historically been attributed to female, fem to the feminine um, in a negative light, 
like being a doormat. That's not what I mean exactly, but this that's the energy. I'm going to go through some of the things that are coming up for me that are in this energy, and hopefully the word will show up as well. But it's like passive, wallflower, doormat, 1950s housewife. What is the word I'm looking for? Whatever it is, I'm sure that by now you've gotten a sense of what I'm trying to say. And so with us getting Empress, which is divine femininity, and getting her in reverse, the message here for you is to, you know, if there is a tendency to be swayed out of speaking, to be swayed out of sharing, you might have, oh, you could have also been someone who grew up in a family that... um uh, you were told children should be seen and not heard. And so that, you know, that stuck with you and eventually you processed that or, or owned it as I should be seen and not heard, you know? So I'm getting something definitely, you know, however it manifests in your life, because this is a collective reading, so it's going to be different for everybody, but I'm definitely getting something here around, um, overcoming conditioning or belief systems that say to you that you can't or shouldn't contribute, that you don't have a right to contribute, whether you are male or female, okay? So again, these are things that have historically been negatively attributed to women, um, the woman behind the man kind of bullshit. But um, <laughs> hmm. anyway, let your voice be heard. And show us all just how freaking brilliant you are by sharing both sides of the equation when it comes to whatever it is you're critiquing. I'm definitely, um, oh, I'm getting to, oh, oh, I love this. Okay, so I'm getting to tell you that um, it doesn't have to be that you just do movie reviews or you just do music reviews or you just do book reviews because again, you're not, we're not looking at a new career path. We're looking at a hobby for you, right? So similar to what I do with my roundup each week, the content that I share in it uh, of things that have been inspiring to me, they can be in all different kinds of genres, all different kinds of categories. I'm not just saying, you know, here are the best tarot readings I heard this week. Though I totally could do that. Um, uh, no, no, no. So since this is a hobby for you, I'm getting that the thing that's going to bring the enjoyment is sharing. That's the point is the sharing, not what specifically you are sharing. So it could be that wherever you choose to host it, basically, again, it's commentary. I'm getting that for you. It's about commentary because a lot of times these commentary channels, they're talking about all the different things under the sun, not just the one thing. So for you, it's um, possible that it could be that, you know, on this week right here, you post your review of a song that, sorry, of an album that you just got and listened to. Uh, Metallica just released one like two weeks ago. If it was even two weeks ago, it might have just been one week ago. I know this because my boyfriend is like a huge fan. And so um, he needed he needed two hours the night that it came out. He wanted two hours to just sit and listen to it uninterrupted which is easy for me to do. I love giving him space because oh, so, that means I get space. But anyway, so and so he just took it in and he does this every time they drop a new album. So you might be someone like that, that you um, listen to something new. And so you're going to write about that in this blog or sharing it as screenshots on Instagram or um, many, there's so many ways that you can just a commentary channel on YouTube. And then the next week, it could be that you're sharing about a movie. And then the next week, it could be that you're sharing about a restaurant that you went to. The key is for you to share. So let, like, let's say your name was Michelle. You know, it could be called Michelle's Takes or... Um, Michelle sees or Michelle says is makes more sense than Michelle sees. I don't know. But, you know, this is your thing, not my thing. I'm just saying if you choose to publish it in any way or share it with others in any way, it doesn't have to be about just one thing. So don't feel like you have to be locked in. Uh, the thing that's important here is the sharing of where you're coming from, what you think, what you feel, and then also presenting that other side. I feel, you know, I'm getting very much that it's it's so much about not just being one-sided or not just you just not contributing to the conversation at all. Uh, this hobby is going to bring you a lot of joy because it is going to 
serve both of those purposes in your life and then also uh, be a blessing to others as they consume the material that you share. All right, you guys, that's what I have for you today. I love this. Oh, man. I love this for you. Congratulations. Enjoy that hobby. Um, if you choose to do something like this, please be sure to let me know so I can start. I want to be in your audience. You're in my audience. I want to be in your audience. So uh, come back to this video if that's easiest for you and type it in the comments what you've decided to do and where I can find it. And um, I might even just share it with my peeps. Of course, I will share it with my peeps. <laughs> I'd have no choice but to share it with my peeps. So yeah, you guys take care and I will see you in my next one. Bye. If you'd like a closer connection to your higher self and more insights to help you self-actualize and experience the life you truly want, you should order a personal reading from me on Etsy. Love readings, rediscovering yourself after narcissistic relationship readings, as well as yes, no, dream career, manifestation acceleration, a daily tarot guidance subscription, and more. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just said that. Anyway, <laughs> use discount code Sean Vibes, all one word, no period, to save 15%. Hi, y'all. So you were drawn into your reading by this tiger eye. I never know if I'm supposed to say tiger eye or tiger's eye. I've seen it both ways. I like tiger's eye. I think I tend to say tiger's eye most. Are you getting that? probably aren't getting a full sense of how beautiful it is because it's well brown <laughs> some people might think of it as orange but it is brown anyway so for your reading we are going to connect with your higher self and we are going to get a message of hope for you from that higher self these cards as i say every time have already been shuffled but you might still see me do a little shuffling here and there as it helps me to focus my intention into your reading. So let's find out what message your higher self has for you right now. Can we have some information please to share with those who found this reading? message for them, from them, the elevated version of themselves. All right, so the first card we have is Eight of Pentacles. Hmm. Message of hope for these guys. We have the Five of Wands. message of hope for those who were drawn to this reading today from their higher self. We got two just now together, so we'll take them both. Three of Cups and Prince of Swords. Three of Cups and Prince of Swords together. Hmm. Message of hope. You slid out, I saw you. Ten of Cups. Yeah, that's definitely hope there, right? That Ten of Cups, that's ultimate happiness right there. I have one more, please. Message of hope for those who are drawn to this reading today. The Hanged One. Oh, <laughs> my heart just went like this. Oh, you guys. Oh, okay, I'm going to enhance your reading with some oracle cards. I'm going to use the starlight cards to get some ind additional. Additional is not even a word. To get some additional information for you. You have a little bit more input, please for those who chose this group today. Message of hope, destiny. It is not in the stars, but in yourself. Message of hope, 
again so far with the messages eclipse celebrate cycles okay great this totally makes sense to me uh getting this one along with our hangman here all right so you guys who there's a lot going on in your reading let me start by pointing out in case you haven't noticed it already you have pentacles, you have wands, you have cups, you have swords. You have all four suits. You have cups twice. You have all four suits and you have a major arcana card. So the first thing that I get from this for you is your higher self is saying to you, everything is going to be all right in all areas of your life you are going to see improvement. However, this is not going to be happening immediately. I'm getting that this is actually going to be long-term, okay? Um, that uh, some of you might actually be going through something right now where you, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and so you might feel as though there is no light at the end of the tunnel, but your higher self is reminding you that there is indeed. Between us getting Celebrate Cycles as well as the Hanged One here, I'm getting that for you. You are probably in a period right now of lull, um, of uh, non-activity, of um, maybe things that you're trying to do are being blocked or feel as though they're blocked. Um I'm getting for for a lot of you, it's it's more than just, oh, nothing's happening, but that you are actually enduring right now some some bad things, some some things that make you more than uncomfortable emotionally, psychologically, it might maybe even physically. I'm not really getting an indication here that um it's the the physical realm. So I'm not getting an indication here that it's like your home is like you're in danger of losing your home or you might already be homelessness. I'm not getting anything like that. I'm not getting anything around your health. Uh, but I am getting that you are, uh, for many of you are going through a period right now where things are just overwhelmingly negative and it is suffocating you uh, from being able to feel hope, whether or not you're someone who uh, normally can connect to um like through affirmations or positive thinking or whatever you might normally be able to like lift yourself up be resilient keep going but right now even if you are that person who is normally so resilient who normally can just keep going who normally can see or just know because of what you know about life things always you know improve things are always changing and turning you are feeling right now and have been feeling for a while now as though that is not the case at all. And um, your higher self is telling me to tell you today, it is still the case that things will improve. And right now you are in a uh, predetermined, not the right word, let me do better. Give me a second. You are in a necessary period of difficulty, of challenge, possibly obstacle because it is leading to your greater growth in the long run. Where you are going to be at the end of this is infinitely better than where you started. And it's not just in the one area where you see or feel the challenge. Because of what you're experiencing right now, all areas of your life are going to improve. So it could be that right now you're having a hard time with your finances specifically, but you're in great health and you have wonderful relationships or or even not even great and wonderful. Maybe just you have health and you have relationships, right? Um, but but the finances are, are, are really just not doing what you need them to do. Um, once you get to the other side of what is going on, with you right now what's going on with you is going on for you it's happening for you okay uh in one in for one reason it's happening is to help you shift your perspective uh the way you look at certain things in life in order to be able to frame your experiences differently and start to make different choices that better serve you and help you create a life that is more in alignment with who you really are and what you really want um so hanging tight 
uh, as you go through this, know that the perspective shift, the change in you, you are being changed from the inside out. This is part of what you're experiencing. We see this with your uh, five of wands as well as your hanged one. The five of wands in particular speaks to inner conflict, at least the way I tend to read five of wands. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's inner conflict. It's inner conflict. So, uh, <laughs> so, and what that is, is you know, there's this proverb that you might have heard before that something like inside of me, there lives, um, I'm paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's something like inside of me, there is a, a, a good dog and a bad dog. And the one that wins out is the one that I choose to feed that day. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, I think it might be um, a proverb from one of the indigenous tribes of uh, North America, but um the basic idea is like we we are what we believe and keep believing because we act based on those beliefs and then so we get more results that are in alignment with those actions that we took that are that were in alignment with those beliefs that we had and so that reinforces those beliefs uh, when we get more of the same, you know, and there's more and more and more of that. So what's happening with you is there is uh, the dogs inside of you, they're fighting each other, right? Because there's the dog that has been running the show and then there's the new alpha come to play, right? And they're not playing yet. They're not in harmony yet. So there, you might find yourself having opposing viewpoints about something that is super important to you. And you're not able to, at this time, land on the, uh, what you consider to be a firm idea, a firm opinion around that thing. You might sincerely and truly feel conflicted. I am getting for you that it is very important as you go through this time that you let yourself lean on your personal relationships, particularly those people uh, with whom you feel the closest. So these may be long-term associations that you have, like friends from high school, or it could be like your siblings, if you're close with your siblings, but someone that you have extreme closeness with someone or someones that you have extreme closeness with, I'm getting that you need to lean on them for support. Don't feel as though you need to go through this by your yourself and don't judge yourself and be like oh I'm talking about it too much or they don't understand what I'm saying because they may not okay they may sometimes be looking at you and just go uh-huh yeah because they're trying to be supportive but they don't get where you're coming from and the reason why they don't get where you're coming from is because of the fact that you <laughs> are ascending. There is something inside of you that is growing. It's not just changing, you're growing. And so you are getting life lessons and experiences right now that they don't have a, uh, a guidebook for, a, a blueprint for, experience with a lexicon, a index for, whatever the word may be. And so sometimes it may seem like they don't get you, um, but that doesn't mean they're not willing to be supportive of you while you uh, experience this and as you grow. And so I'm getting for you definitely that you need to lean on those close relationships, okay? We're getting that with this gorgeous Three of Cups card here, as well as our Prince of Swords at the same time. Yes, Casper. He talks every time I do one of these readings, every time. I think he's, I, I won't say what I think he's doing, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so Prince of Swords, okay? So I'm getting into, you know, not just to lean on them for support, but to share. Let yourself talk about it. Don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel ashamed. I'm getting very strong vibrations to say to you, shame has to go out of the window. Shame is not going to serve you as you experience this situation. What you're going through right now is going to require you to be meticulous in your coping skills, okay? So, you know, with Eight of Pentacles, we had that's like a strengthening of your skills card. You, you're working at it until you get better and better and better. And this is one of those opportunities where life is allowing you to get better and stronger at some of your life skills. Apply your life skills and your coping skills. So apply those to the situation that you're in. When we have challenging times, it can sometimes be so easy for us to fall into reactive behaviors or be uh, led only through our emotions. Your emotions are super important and you do need to uh, take note of them and let them guide you at this time. But add to that guidance, add to it coping skills and life skills that you have learned over your um over your life, over your time of maturing, um, you are going to need to use those to get through this period as well as they will be stronger. 
these skills of yours will be more embedded in you at the end of it. I'm very surprised that we didn't get tower card here because, um, you know, I'm just curious. I'm going to flip the back of the deck and see if it might be there. Um, but I'm saying that because I feel like you are, many of you are going through a tower moment and that's why you were looking for uh, a message of hope from your higher self. And this is a big one too, because it is regarding your destiny. It is, it is connected to, um, the life, the, 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 the soul plan, I think is the best way to put it. It's different people are going to call it different things. Okay. So some people say life purpose. Some people say what I'm meant to do. Some people say right track, whatever verbiage works for you. It has to do with what you are creating as your life and the contribution that you're going to be making to society based on that. Right. And when I say society, for some of you, it might be as big as you're a huge name like Oprah was. And she touched a lot of people's lives in many positive ways. Right. Or it could be just the society of your immediate circle. But um, your destiny is tied to what you are experiencing right now. So this is the hope. This is the hope. Remember that. This is not happening to you for no reason. It is directly connected to your destiny. And because of what you are experiencing right now, it is going to help you to actually be able to fulfill that destiny. If you weren't having this experience, you wouldn't be able to be in the fullness of that destiny. You would not be able to, to, to be the fullness of you. This is bringing you to that place that is going to bring you ultimate joy and ultimate happiness and not just for you but also for others around you others who are connected to you whether relationally uh like personal relationships or through your your job or you're in the same group you go to the same church whatever it could even just like some people might even just start benefiting from being beside you in line at the store right behind you in line at the store y'all know what i meant so anyway i'm definitely getting that for you to stick with it stick with uh this is very important for anybody who might be in recovery i'm getting if you might be in recovery uh from like alcohol or substance abuse um or any other sort of addiction or if not specifically recovery recovery have had like two parts of your life, the before and the after, you know, the before you changed or were enlightened and the after that some of what you're experiencing now may uh, make you feel it was all for nothing, that that things didn't really get better, that it wasn't real, that you didn't really change or things didn't really change or whatever. The, uh, for you, yeah, it's very important for you guys to understand that that is not true. It is very important for you to understand that life is cyclical for everybody, that everybody gets good times and bad times, that everybody has challenges. It's just that some people don't like to share that shit because they want to look like they've got it all together, okay? But you are being told by your higher self, uh, whether you are in some sort of recovery or had some kind of major life shift or not, but particularly for those of you who did, do not lose hope dig into those skills so if you are somebody who is part of like a 12-step program and you haven't been to a meeting in a while now is the time to go if you're going to the meetings but you're not working your steps get back into the steps if you have uh, some other program that you use that's not necessarily connected to again addictions but something that you found like for you it might have been just journaling every day and then you fell out of habit with that um, it could be making sure you get good rest it could be making sure you exercise um, on a regular basis, you know, whatever the thing is that gets you through life that you do and commit to when things are fine, you need to also do and commit to now during this time of challenge. And that is what is going to help you get through it. Um, I'm not going to say faster. I'm getting definitely that there is no rushing through this uh, because we have celebrate cycles cycle cycle so there's a period of good and there's uh it's just like with uh farming i think yes with farming um that there is the period of sowing and the period of reaping and you cannot reap when it is not reaping season you cannot reap when there is nothing to pull up right so for you guys i am definitely getting the reminder that while it may be uncomfortable while you might want to hurry up and make it be over you cannot it will be finished when it is finished.
But what you can do is keep an open mind, let it change you, let it grow you while at the same time digging into those things that you know work for you in your life. When it comes to the inner conflict, just know you are shifting. And because you are shifting, you will have conflicting thoughts. The one thought is trying to tell you one thing that's the new way of thinking. And the other thought's going, yeah, but this over here. You know, so those two things. Oh, I forgot. We're not supposed to say that word anymore. Sorry. I grew up in a time when, you know, it wasn't as as big a deal to. Anyway, I should probably stop talking about that now. Um, <laughs> the point is this. Um, that inner conflict you're experiencing is part of the growth, the growth to get you to the other side. And remember to use your support systems, whether it is something formalized like a support group or group therapy, or it's just the people in your life who love you. Now, I picked this up earlier because I said I was going to check and see if there was a ta uh, tower card under here. I don't know. Let's find out. What is it? Oh, it's not. Not even close. It's literally the opposite of Tower card. It's the Four of Wands. How do I put this so you can see it? It's Four of Wands. Four of Wands. Um, and you know, Four of Wands along with Ten of Cups, the two together, again, definitely opposite of, of Tower card. So Tower card is your whole world being torn apart. You know, your life being torn, torn apart. apart. Uh, that which is home for you in your heart or possibly even sometimes your actual physical home you know the, just think of the the uh imagery of tower card uh originally you've got this building a structure that is literally broken and and it's falling and all of the people are falling out of it it's very much like 9 11. i was in new york when 9 11 happened um and four of wands is the opposite of that Four of Wands is structure. Four of Wands is everything is in its place and it is uh, secure. And, um, you know, sometimes we read it as the wedding card. Sometimes we we read it as, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely celebratory energy, right? And so having Four of Wands and Three of Cups, which are celebratory energy, <clears throat> excuse me, having Ten of Cups and Four of Wands, which are both you know, I feel happy home life cards. So for you, definitely just knowing that you are going to the this being at the back of the deck, underneath the deck energy, this is keep this in your mind and in your heart as you go through this experience, that this is not the end of you. This is the beginning of building something new and stronger and better and more fulfilling and more happy for you and those who are in your life. This is for your good. This is for your highest good. And not only will you uh, come through it, but you will come through it being grateful that you had the experience at all. That is your message from your higher self today. And also, of course, you know, lean on your friends. This is super important. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's what I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful. Hey, the way this uh, video is going, there might be messages for you in many piles. So be sure to check the other ones out. Otherwise, I will see you in my next one. Bye. If you'd like a closer connection to your higher self and more insights to help you self-actualize and experience the life you truly want, you should order a personal reading from me on Etsy. Love readings, rediscovering yourself after narcissistic relationship readings, as well as yes, no, dream career, manifestation acceleration, a daily tarot guidance subscription, and more. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just said that. Anyway, <laughs> use discount code Sean Vibes, all one word, no period, to save 15%. Hey, y'all. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask. Um, so you guys were drawn into your reading by this lovely Amazonite. It is green. I don't know why I felt the need to tell you that. Oh, yes, I do. Because the deck that we'll be using for your reading uh, today is also green. And so I have added to the green ambiance by having um, my teal light. I hope... Oh, that might not be flattering for my skin. Hmm. Well, you know, at least it's only one reading. So yeah, I did different uh, light for each of the readings. 
that are part of this video. And I didn't set out to make it so that these were all in the blue green family. It just happened that way. I felt Amazonite should be um, the stone connected to this particular reading. And that is look forward to this happening soon. Your next big manifestation. Let's get started. All right. So I'm going to, oh, I didn't take this down from the last one. Hmm, look at that. So that's the tiger eye from the reading that I just finished. Put that away. And we'll put you right there, little Amazonite. Um, and the deck we're going to be using for your reading is Ciro Marchetti's Golden Terror Royale. I think that's what it's called. I haven't used it in so long. Gilded, gilded. I knew that. It's like something is wrong. Something is not right about that. Gilded Tarot Royale. When I first got this deck, I was in love with it, but um, I haven't used it in a while. So we'll see what wonderful messages it gives us today around what your next big manifestation is. I have already pre-shuffled these cards thoroughly, but you might occasionally see me do more shuffling just because it helps me focus my energy as we do your reading. All right, they are being difficult. Maybe they want another one. Let me give them another riffle. Because this is usually one of my easier ducks to shuffle. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It told me that my shoulders were too high. All right. Next big manifestation for these guys. What can we tell them about what they can look forward to have happen soon? I see you. Okay, so we have King of Swords. We also have the Chariot. Next big manifestation for these guys. What message do we have for them regarding that? We have Judgment. That's a heavy hitters with this reading so far. So big personalities. There are big, big, big energies. Energy is the word I was looking for. This one seems... Oh, yeah. Woo! Big energies. We have tower. And I, I really need tower to be here. So I'm going to pull these down a little bit. That's where those go. All right. So, so far we've got king of swords and three major arcana right behind it. So this... Uh, and it's a big manifest. Like, this makes sense. Oh, gosh. I don't know why I didn't think about this a second ago. But yes, of course, you've got heavy hitters with your reading so far because we're talking about your next big manifestation. And you don't get bigger than the major arcana, right? So you got chariot, which is movement. You got judgment. You've got the tower, which is, you know, huge life change. Now, usually tower is connected to, uh, well, I mean, all of the major arcana is about life change, but tower is usually connected to um, life change that we have not initiated ourselves. However, we are talking about your manifestation, right? So this is something that you have been working towards. I want to get a few more cards. Can we have a little bit more info? Oh, come on, sloppy girl. So you know what? Let's take them all. We're going to take them. We're going to take them. They came out. We're going to take them. So we have six of swords. We have the devil. So another major arcana card. We have the magician. Holy crap. We have the fool. Holy crap. A knight of cups. Wow. Yeah, wow. Um, wow, and the magician, he's like, he's staring right at me. He's like, do it. Wow. You guys, this is a lot. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this by saying I'm going to take my time with this reading because one of the major things I'm getting from the cards we have so far is that this is a very important manifestation. This is very important life change. Your guides are part of this with you. So this is not just you manifestation, you manifesting uh, from your vision board. 
your affirmations, your scripting. This is manifestation I'm getting uh, possibly on a soul level, definitely definitely there's there's a, a, a spiritual element to it and and I, I definitely mean spiritual and not religious so so in terms of the minors we have swords twice and then we also have cups we have two court cards and one card that is um, definitely about a change in your way of thinking. I'm getting that it's around uh, letting go. It's more than just letting go of old patterns of thought, but also that like, most of the times, in most of my decks, the Six of Swords, the perspective of it is around the going away from, <clears throat> excuse me, going away from what was. It, like if it was a camera, like a movie camera, <clears throat> excuse me, or a camcorder, or even your camera phone, it's as though the camera is behind the people in the boat. And we see the person rowing from the back. And so we get a very clear sense of her, usually her, moving away from something. But, uh, and, and it's implied towards something else. With this one, though, I'm getting very much for you that it's about the real focus is about what you're moving towards. And... There is no trepidation in you. There's no fear. You have been ready for this for a very long time. This might be something that you have thought of on some level since your childhood or when you were a teen. There's a breakaway energy here. And definitely a sense of newness. I'm getting that. It has to do with your family in some regard. And before any of you tense up, I'm getting that it's about moving away from your family towards that which is more holy and authentically you. I'm getting that this manifestation is definitely something that you have struggled to believe you could have or be or do. That there was thinking around not being the kind of person who, the kind of person this could happen to or the kind of person who could do it. I'm really getting a sense here around relocation. And for some of you, it might be that it it's late movement. So I'm... This might not resonate for everybody, but I'm getting the sense around moving from uh, dysfunctional systems, moving from addiction backgrounds or other types of toxic family environments. Like you were the one in the family that knew something was off. And you have been moving away from this family and this scenario for a very long time. I'm getting since, I'm getting since uh, the 13, 12, Early in your uh, adolescence, you began separating yourself from that system. And while you couldn't make the move because you were a child, you did start adopting new thoughts about life, about yourself, about yourself in life. 
about what you saw happening in the home. You did not toe the line. You did not believe the story, the accepted story of the family, particularly of the person who is the uh, biggest perpetrator of harm in that family. I'm getting this as a person that uses mind fuckery a lot. Um, as though they sit on their throne, they make all the rules, they change the rules at whim and others have to adjust to what this person has deemed as truth today. There may have been a lot of gaslighting in this, not may have, there was a lot of gaslighting. Um, I am feeling compelled to say, if you have heard this much so far and it does not sound like you, one of two things is happening, okay? First, it could be that it's not your family, but an other uh, toxic system where you are part of the group. So there is like a family dynamic within it. So as I'm using the word family, it might be for you co-workers, okay, or your church. Um, and then the second possibility is this may not be your reading today, but this is clearly the message that's coming through today. So, you know, sometimes when we're picking our piles, we're not exactly connected to our intuition and we may not pick the right pile. I, I've done that when I'm watching other people's pick of cards. I'm like, that's not me. And then I go and pick another and it's like, oh yeah, there it is. Okay. So it could be that. Um, and I would love to invite you to check out one of the other readings that are part of this video or any of the other readings on my channel if this does not feel like it is meant for you. But for those of you for whom this is your reading, you are being reminded that you have... Um, so you've had magician energy your whole life. You're one of those people that was born with that. And you have seen yourself time after time be able to manifest things that you've wanted for yourself so it could have been um wanting to go to a specific camp even though you know you might not have been encouraged to by the family but somehow you made that work or you were able to find that it could be you know um going to the college that you wanted to go to or getting that easy bake oven that you wanted whatever the thing is you have always had an element of being able to um, get what you want. But in this area, because the entrainment is so deep and starts before you have words, this felt like something where you could not make a shift, where you could not make a change. And your reading right here today says that not only can you, but all of the efforts that you've been making towards it, whether it's just what you've been thinking about, what you have been discussing with others, research that you have done, visiting certain places, it is all coming together. And that is your next big manifestation. And you are being told, yes, it will happen. Yes. So there is movement away from this family or this family system, family like system, uh, towards a better environment for you. Uh, it will be life changing. It does require massive movement, literal movement. Um, and it, and things will be new, brand new for you. Um, but you are also being reminded that you have inside of you the courage for this. Do not let yourself be intimidated when the opportunity comes. Sometimes we want to manifest something for ourselves, and then when we start to see signs of it, we pull back or self-sabotage or change our minds. Oh, I didn't really want that in the first place. But this is saying everything is coming together to give you this. And I am getting for a lot of you, it is literal relocation to a new place. So you could be someone who lives in, like me, right? I lived in North Carolina before I moved 3000 miles away to Los Angeles, where I have now lived for almost 12 years, right? It can be whatever the move is, it's massive enough to keep you away from this system. And it's going to be easier and easier for you not to have to participate because while you may not actually live in that family home anymore, if you're still in that town or near enough in the next state over, you still feel the need to uh, meet certain obligations that get put on you by these very people who have not been um, the healthiest of influences in your life. But with this move that you're going to get to make, you're going to be far enough away that you are going to be able to create for yourself a brand new existence, a brand new um, life, really. 
and be able to beg off of things you don't want to do. I don't even want to say beg off because this is such an empowerment for you. This is such an empowering reading and and, and what you have done in your life to bring this about speaks to your strength and your inner power and who you are. So not beg off, just say no. You're going to be able to boundary up and feel like you can adhere to your boundaries because it will just be easier. And there is no shame in that. You know, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be like the ideal version of something. Um, and so like, well, I should be able to just stand up to them. No, that's not always easy. You know, the fact that you want to is enough. That speaks to your fortitude. But there may be some situations, uh, whether it's pressure from parents or pressure from siblings about the parents or whatever, where you don't feel as though you can set and hold a boundary. And so in cases like that, a lot of times, actually removing yourself physically from that environment is the only way to be able to do it. And that is okay. That is all right. So I'm definitely getting a sense that there is relocation here. For those of you that it's a job system, as opposed to your actual family, it's clearly moving to another job and one that better serves you. There is, again, a newness factor. So whether it's that you're moving to a new location or it's that you're moving to a new job, it is going to be unlike anything that you have experienced before in that. Let me let me tone that down a little bit because that did sound a little extreme. Um, Again, I'm going to use me as an example again. My moving from North Carolina to Los Angeles, I was not mentally prepared for how different those two places are. Now, some of y'all might be laughing, but like, Sean is North Carolina. Look, I lived in Charlotte. Charlotte is a major city. It was great. It's not like I was in the sticks. But this is what I like to say to people. Before I moved here, I lived in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, New York, Washington, D.C. And all those places were very different from each other. Until I moved here, then they all felt the same. Because here is just that much different than any part of the East Coast. And I'm getting for you that that is part of what this experience is going to be with this new manifestation. You are, manifest you are manifesting for yourself a new world, a new world, a new world. You are manifesting for yourself an, a new existence. You get to, you get to remake yourself with this you get to be how you want to be where you want to be it doing what you want to do you are moving away from that which has held you down for too long you are physically getting to go somewhere else and like i said for the majority of you it's going to be moving you know to a new location some of you might be going out of the country it's a major move it is not, again, you're going from North Carolina to South Carolina or you're going to North Dakota, from North Dakota to South Dakota. No, it's not like, though, from what I've heard, those two places are very, very different. And North and South Carolina are also very different. But anyway, it's not just you're like, no, you, there's massive space being made between what was and what is coming. Um, and you are able to handle it. You are ready for it. You've been preparing for it. Let your adventurous spirit come out. Because you can handle what's going to come your way. There are challenges that come with moving, okay? There is confusion that comes with moving. There is getting things set up, the logistics of moving, all of that. Be prepared. Know that though it will be hard, there are times where it's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. Um, though that is the case, you can handle it. And you are worthy of it. You are worthy of this. You are going to, um, you're going to feel how you feel. But the guidance that I'm getting is to not let whatever comes up for you make you turn back because this is meant. And it's not just about you. I'm getting that this is for your family line. If you are someone who wants to have children, your children will now be brought up in this new world that you're creating, not the one that you came from. 
Okay, so you, this is there's some ancestral work happening here, or, or maybe that's the wrong word, karmic work. I don't know. I don't know the word because that's not my space. Okay, but um, like I hear it when other people say it, and I get what they mean. But in terms of me trying to impart it to you, I'll, I'll speak on it this way. This is this is language I do understand. If you happen to be from a background where there was abuse and it wasn't just in your immediate family, but there's just in your family, it was just abuse, but you get out and you learn things and you get gone. The family you create will be informed by what you have learned and the new choices that you have begun to make that are different from those choices that were made by the people in your family before you. So the next generation, they have it better than the generations that came before because of the choices that you've made, the growing that you have done. And that's what's happening here. But it's definitely a major move. It's definitely a major move. It's definitely a major move. Whatever the reason is behind the move, you are relocating. That is the major manifestation that's happening, whether it's relocating of your home or it's relocating of what job you do. That is the big shift. Okay, so I want to grab for you. I am torn. Let me see. I'm going to pull your Oracle cards from this new oracle deck that i have it's called what is it called something alchemy something water Al i think it's called the water alchemy oracle i don't know I, I think that's right but in case i'm wrong i will put the name of the deck in the description box of this video all right so let's see what comes up for you guys uh oh sorry magician feels very disrespectful <laughs> sorry i just i don't have any room um <laughs> sorry judgment sorry chariot you know what i already shuffled these why do i do that i do that every single time i've already shuffled them so and now he looks like he's laughing at me doesn't he look like he's laughing anyway i don't know maybe i'm a little bit looney tunes okay um Ooh, more information for this group around their next big manifestation. What else can we tell them? This one really wants to come, so we'll take it. Ocean. Yes, the world is big. Yes. Ocean is the biggest body of water, type of water there is, right? And this is your reminder. The world is big. So you, if you have any, again, trepidation, if you have any concern about, you know, whether or not you could ever get far enough away from whatever the situation is or whoever these people are, you absolutely can because the world is big. And you are going to find yourself with this move. You are going to find yourself in your element. What was before was not for you. It could be that, again, just to use me as the example, like North Carolina, my family moved there when I was... 12, 12, and um, we moved to Charlotte from Charleston, South Carolina. And Charleston, South Carolina is a coastal town. So my whole life had been surrounded by water, eating seafood, having cookouts. And then we go to Charlotte and Charlotte was just a very different environment. And instead of it being, you know, on the water, it's very foresty. And at first I didn't like, oh, and it's full of hills. And, and Charleston is, you know, flat. It's low country. It's swamplands. Like, Louisiana, or, or rather New Orleans, particular I think New Orleans, but anyway, parts of Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge. Um, so when I first got to Charlotte, it did not suit me, literally on an elemental level. It was more woods and forests and trees as opposed to oceans, you know, and sand and seashells. So oceans clearly being water, trees clearly being of the earth, and trees. So this, this change that you're going to make, remember, the world is big enough that you can go somewhere. And, um, and it will be for you. It'll be in your element. 
Okay, so what happened was um, my second camera, the battery died. I I didn't think about batteries when I started these readings today, and I, I've done them all in a row and just press pause in between and taking little breaks, and it, I forgot to consider that the second camera has a smaller battery and doesn't last as long. Uh, I learn something new every time I take these things. Anyway, we were talking about ocean, okay? We are talking about the fact that the world is big, and that you will be in your element with this change that you make. That's all I had, actually. <laughs> we were at the end. You guys, thank you for being here. I hope that this good news brings you um, brings you joy. Or if you've been worried, brings you peace, brings you hope. But if nothing else, let it remind, let it, let, let it make you know. Know that you know that you know that you know that you are so powerful and the changes that you want to make for your life, not only do you have the power to do it, but you are supported by a humongous spirit team who is full of their own power and magic and strength. You're not alone. They're on your side and you have the fortitude to handle this. You absolutely do. Of course you do. You're the one that made it happen. All right. Starting to sound corny, so I'm going to go now. I will see you in my next one. <laughs> Bye. If you'd like a closer connection to your higher self and more insights to help you self-actualize and experience the life you truly want, you should order a personal reading from me on Etsy. Love readings, rediscovering yourself after narcissistic relationship readings, as well as yes, no, dream career, manifestation acceleration, a daily tarot guidance subscription, and more. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just said that. Anyway, <laughs> use discount code Sean Vibes, all one word, no period, to save 15%. Hello, y'all. Okay, so you have come here for the title reading. You are drawn into your reading today by this amethyst crystal ball. I have a crystal ball. When I saw it, I had to have it. I've had it for like a week now. I just bought it. It's so gorgeous. I guarantee the camera is not doing it any justice. And the reading that you guys are receiving today is what life change do you really want to make right now? So I'm not going to do a lot of talking ahead of time because this is a big one. And we are going to just jump right in. So actually, you know what? Before I pick your tarot cards, which of course have been pre-shuffled, as I say in every reading, I'm actually going to start you guys off with your oracle cards, okay? So this is uh, the Wild Muse Oracle by Vanessa Samoyana. And we're going to start by picking a couple of those and then move into your tarot. Let me get a little bit closer. Oh, it's better on my legs. <laughs> All right, here we go. What was that sound? Oh, the AC just came on. Hold on. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that, you guys. Um, that startled me. So let me get back into... What life change would you really like to make right now? That's what we're looking at. And in case I don't remember if I said it or not, this is the Wild News Oracle by Vanessa Samoyana. I did say it, I did say it. Okay, we have Crystal Clear. I'm gonna take one more. What life change would you really like to make right now? And becoming nobody very, very interesting. So before having gotten any of your tarot cards, the first, I don't know if I even have the words to say what it is I'm sensing immediately with these two. Let me see if I can. I'm getting a sense of etherealness, if that's a word. I feel like this has to do with your greater self, your spiritual side, maybe. I don't know for certain. We're going to, we're going to get more, but I'm getting lightness sans physical, uh, meaning without the physical. I'm getting 
definitely getting that this is about your vibes, your energy, your spirit, your, again, ethereal nature, the soul. But I feel like it's lighter than soul, so probably more spirit than soul. Let's see what else comes up. What life change would you like to make right now? Uh-oh. We have the fool. What life change would you like to make right now? We have the Knight of Cups. Interesting. I did not see that coming. What life change would you like to... Page of Pentacles. What life change would you like to make? And Two of Swords. Okay, I think... Let me start with these. I think I may actually end up pulling more cards. But let me tell you what I have so far. So this does have to do with your vibe. It does have to do with your energy. It has to do with who you are in the inside. You might be someone who feels too heavy. You might have very um, mature energy and you may have been mature since childhood. Uh, not necessarily, but possibly. There has been on you just this sense of responsibility, this... Um, sense of obligation maybe it stemmed from your home maybe you were just born that way but i'm getting that oh for some of you it could actually be that the heavy energy is um you might be depressives if you're someone who struggles with depression or any other um i don't want to say disorder i don't know if it's a disorder i'm not i'm not a clinician so i don't want to use the wrong words but um Something that makes you function less, less, less physically functional. So you might actually have a physical impediment that creates this. This I'm getting that there, there's been just a heaviness or a slowness or a maturity to your energy, just density, thickness. And you are ready for that not to be the case anymore. You are ready to be more in the spirit of playfulness, the spirit of youth, the spirit of adventure, joy, fun. Um, let's see what else comes up. Can I have more information, please, for this group? What life change would they like to make right now? Are you somebody who takes on responsibilities that aren't yours, whether at work or in your family, in your home? Um, they, are, do you tend to have that, that feeling that if you don't get it done, it won't get done? Um, do you find yourself clashing with other alpha types, other people who have a take, take action kind of energy? I'm getting that. There's just, again, this, just this sense, the obligation is the word that keeps coming. Obligation, responsibility, have to, adulting. I'm getting coffee, you know, and we tend to associate coffee with adults as opposed to children. You know, you know, you're grown up when you're having your morning coffee kind of thing. So this idea around being, you know, a grown up. Be, like having to be so present, having to be so there and carrying so much. In fact, I'm, I'm surprised that we didn't get 10 of wands because I'm getting the sense of burden. I'm getting the feeling around have to burden, responsibility, caretake. Um, now it could be, you know, justifiably that you're caretaking an elderly or aging or sorry, elderly or sick parent or otherwise a, other kind of loved one. It could be that, but I am getting for many of you. It's just feeling like you have to be the one, you know? So like, I don't know if you ever saw Alvin and the Chipmunks, particularly the one from like back in the day, but there's Alvin, Simon and Theodore, right? And, um, Simon is the middle child. 
But you would think he was the firstborn because he's Mr. Responsibility. Is that you? Are you that person that even when things are not your responsibility, you take responsibility? You feel obligated. That's what I'm getting. And I'm getting that there's a need for, a desire for uh, more adventure, more newness, more freedom. Um, yeah, maybe your teen years were taken from you. Was there possibly a family... Um, like a shift in your family or a family tragedy that changed things. So your youth ended early. Um, but definitely with us getting Knight of Cups, the Fool and Page of Pentacles, I'm feeling there just this desire for being able to be more playful, have more fun, maybe develop hobbies. You know, there's a reading in this video about hobbies, um, what hobby you would really enjoy or you would enjoy most right now. You might want to check that out. Um... Oh man, let's see what else comes up here. Can I have more information for, cause I'm really feeling this for you, you know, and this two of swords, this is like, this is the adulting, having to make decisions. Did you have to start making decisions, very adult decisions early in your life? Or even if you did it at the appropriate time, you know, after 18 as a full grown adult, just having to make very heavy decisions and not quite knowing what to do, um, either because of lack of life experience or because the situation you found yourself in or the situation you found yourself in were just that overwhelming. You may be someone who struggles with CPTSD because you've had multiple traumas in your life. And when you have too many traumas or you've, or, or you've experienced narcissistic abuse, and so either of those things can make it so that you have a very hard time making decisions. It is almost impossible for you to make a decision on your own, even when it is your responsibility. Um, I'm getting for for the majority of you that it's that there has been so much decision decision making making that has fallen on your shoulders and you are you know ready to let go of that let your spirit be free let yourself you know so this idea of becoming nobody or crystal clear ceasing to exist it's exist in the way that you have before not so much like oh i'm gonna unalive myself as mental illness puts it i love that guy um, he's from my home state. Um, but no, it's not so much about, oh, I'm, you know, it's overwhelming. Life is too hard. I'm going to commit suicide. It is not that, though. I do want to say if anybody here is struggling with those feelings or contemplating uh, unaliving themselves, please do reach out for help. Um, because I feel that there is very much positive change available for you. It's about finding the support and the tools to, to have that happen. If you don't feel like it's something that you can tap into on your own, for many of you, I feel it's more that you just don't feel like you have the right to, that you have permission to do it. This is your permission. You have permission to let go of the heavy stuff. But if you are somebody who is struggling, you know, so much so that suicide has been something you have contemplated, then please do reach out to um, hotlines, your church, if you have a church, uh, a trusted loved one, but do not carry that burden by yourself, okay? Um, but your spirit, whomever you are uh, who that found this reading today, your spirit is wanting more fun, more play, more freedom. Do I have any more information for this group? We have high priestess. Yeah. So you've had to like be very analytical because of life circumstances. And you've had to like make so many important decisions, some of which I feel that some of you have gotten like wrong. And so you carry this burden of having made the wrong choice. And you just, you feel like I don't even want that anymore. I just don't want that anymore. And what I'm getting here for you with this, uh, high priestess card. Can you see that? Yeah, you can is, um, you know, giving yourself, letting yourself know your intuition is a connection to your true self. It's a connection to your real self, as is your inner child, as is your, your younger self. And, um, as you become more playful, as you allow yourself not to only focus on obligations and responsibilities, you will have more access to your intuition and things will start being more crystal clear for you. You won't feel so much confusion when you have to make decisions because of the fact that you will be listening to your highest and true with self uh, when you tap into that intuition. But allowing for more playfulness in your life is the first start. And what I'm getting for you because of the reading that you chose today is there is a desire for that. You actually want that. Um, let's see what else comes up for you guys. Anything else for this group regarding 
uh, change, life change that they would like to make right now. So it's about your perspective in life and how you go through life. We have seven of cups. So this is reminding you that you have options. This is reminding you that you are not stuck in any scenario that you currently find yourself in. And you may be someone who constantly feels as though, uh, you know, life has passed you by or you missed your opportunity. Or again, if you had to grow up fast, that it's too late for you to have a youth, to have fun. And what I'm getting for you here is that it's not true. I'm getting for you here, you know, this again, and again, seven of cups is also about decision making. And so the flip side of us getting this now at this point in your reading is um, around, you know, letting yourself loosening the reins on having to make the decisions. Let some decisions go unmade. Let someone else make some of them. Give yourself the opportunity to not have to be the one to decide all the time, uh, while at the same time knowing that you have the freedom, the choice to do that, free will to do that. So that's making a choice. You've heard people say, I'm sure not making a choice is making a choice, right? So this is evident here with your, your seven of cups card. It's just a reminder for you that you have the right to choose, but you also have the right to sometimes not choose if that is going to, um, connect you to your, your, you know, just your truest energy more. I feel like I'm kind of, I, I hope I'm being clear. Oh. Okay, and then we have four swords here. And this is, you know, a restful card. And like, look at this girl. She has been through it. She is all beat up. Her heart is on the outside of her. And so it's, again, and she looks like a teen. I am 100% getting for you guys. This is about letting go of the adulting. For some of you, you may have, I don't have a lot of seniors in my um, audiences based on what YouTube tells me. But if you happen to be someone whose children are now grown and you are an empty nester now, you know, let go of the obligation to parent anymore let them be adults and you be there for support as they need but have you know rest enjoy yourself have some adventures have fun find something that you love and take action on that um and then for others of you, if you don't happen to be someone that's an empty nester now, you are still being called to just not feel so damn heavy and not feel so much like everything falls on you. And you might even be someone who is a single parent or you might literally be the only person that has, um, you know, the connection to or the ability to do certain things in your life. So you think, but I do want to remind you of the phrase, it takes a village. I know I first heard that from, I, I'm, I believe it was Hillary Clinton while she was still just first lady before she became senator or secretary of state. My God, what a wonderful woman. Anyway, um, she, she just did so much. Um, but it's, it, and, it, and she didn't originate it. Let me just say that before anybody's like, Sean, she didn't come up with it. I know she didn't originate it. It's actually from an African proverb, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I first heard it from her and, and it has stuck with me. And I think I was like 20 because her husband's election was my, f never mind. The point is this. <laughs> the point is <laughs> every time. The point is this. You don't have to do it all. So find the things I'm getting for you that, you know, there's definitely a desire to play more. Find the things that are going to, help you have a sense of fun in your life is what you're wanting. You want more fun in your life. You want uh, more adventure even. So for some of you, it might be taking trips. For some of you, it might be going on retreats, you know, things where there's like the zip lining and, you know, maybe cliff jumping and um, definitely getting for you to try new things, try more new things. When we go into that energy of newness, we become like a child. It's haps because children have, they don't have experience, right? And so everything for them is new. And a way to bring that sense of childlike wonder back into your life is to try new things, experience new things, allow yourself to do things that you haven't done before in a low key, uh, non, um, Oh God, I can't think of the word, but you know, you know, things where there are no stakes, low stakes. That's what I was looking for. Low stakes way. So it could be if you haven't bowled before joining a league temporarily, guess what? You can quit. Don't put the whole thing on yourself. Like, well, they're all counting on me now because I'm a grown up and I got to do all the right things all the time. No, you don't. You can quit. You can quit. Um, let yourself try kayaking. Let yourself try bungee jumping. 
Let yourself try anything new that might bring a spark of excitement, fun, youthful adventure into your life again. Uh, but lay off of putting so much pressure and stress on yourself to be the one to get everything done and to get it all done right. Please hear that if you hear nothing else that I say. Because one of the things that is going to tap you into that spirit of playfulness more is allowing yourself to experiment and explore. And so if you are focused on trying to get things right, you are not in the energy of experimenting or exploring. And then it becomes very serious. It becomes very important, very adult, as it were, instead of just having the experience for its own sake. You guys want more fun in your life? You want to play more. You want to feel less a sense of obligation uh, to others in particular, but in general. I feel like this is a group of people that are walking around all the time feeling like I have to, I should, I have to, I need to, I've got to. Put more I want to. The life change for you right now is put more I want to in your life. I'm getting for some of you go back to school that just came. Go back to school. If you uh, have something that you wanted to study, but you didn't allow yourself to study because maybe your parents said uh, that they would not. I just realized this is crooked. Oh, well, um, they would not pay for your tuition if you studied that thing. Let yourself go back to school now and do it. You don't have to do a whole degree program. You can just take a class in it. Most places have community colleges that have classes in any and everything you might want to learn. Let yourself take it at the recreational level, rec centers, you know, join classes at your rec center, offer to teach a class at the rec center. Again, I feel like for this group, maybe not so much the teaching, just because you already have so much adult energy in you, sense of a obligation responsibility energy on you needing to be the parent needing to be the teacher or about the same so for you i think it's about taking classes and taking classes and things that you either had interest in before and didn't allow yourself to do or that you um have never done before but uh would like to try because you find it interesting now i am getting have more experimentation in your cooking uh put together meals without following recipes let yourself have your creativity come out in that kitchen when you're making new things i got that for you just now is there anything else we can share with this group about their major life? it's your approach to life the major or the life change i don't think that i don't think the title said major and if it did you know ignore that. Uh, the life change that you want right now is about your perspective and your approach to life. How you move through the universe is how I like to say it. And you want to move like an imp. You want to move like a kid. You want to move like like you're skipping rocks. Like, uh, no, that's when you throw them. But you know, like the things like in cartoons where like an elf kind of creature is like jumping from rock to rock to rock. That's what I meant. Okay. Uh, you want to skip through life is what I was getting at. You you want to be a fairy. You want to have the energy that we associate with fairies a lot of the time, you know, where it's just like this mischievous playfulness. You might be somebody who might enjoy playing practical jokes on people. Yeah, I said it. If you have people that you live with or know who aren't super fragile and can handle it, play some pranks, have some fun. That's what you're wanting right now. You are wanting, a part of you is wanting your youth back. And you can't have that back. You cannot go back. Trust me, if we could, I would. But you can bring the spirit of youth into your life. People will love you for it. And you will love yourself for it. You will have so much more fun. So much more fun. All right, you guys, that's what I have for you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my readings. I will see you in my next one. If you'd like a closer connection to your higher self and more insights to help you self-actualize and experience the life you truly want, you should order a personal reading from me on Etsy. Love readings, rediscovering yourself after narcissistic relationship readings, as well as yes, no, dream career, manifestation acceleration, a daily tarot guidance subscription, and more. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just said that. Anyway, <laughs> use discount code Sean Vibes, all one word, no period, to save 15%.